Uh, I work as a lighting designer, I work as a projection designer, I work as a set designer, I work as a sound designer, but primarily lighting and projection is, is where my, my field of study and, and research is. This is an amazing space. The space we're in here is, it's, it's sort of a lighting designer's dream. Basically, where you could hang a light almost anywhere in space, this is what you would design. In 1965 was the first moving light or light that was actually on a servo that could move back and forth. Now we had computer or robotic lighting and these robotic lights now needed more control because you needed control for different types of color, different types of patterns, you needed position information. From here we moved on to the LED explosion. While moving lights need 38 controllable channels per fixture potentially, when we got the LEDs now we were talking about the idea that I needed 40 or 50 or 60 or 100 controllable channels per fixture. All of these monitors and, and, and equipment goes up to a booth for the show, but as electricians are working in the space, they need remote access to that material. And so the iPad has become a great tool for us um, for integrating with, with our, our gear. So that's where we started with control. Um, and the ability to sort of manipulate color and intensity and movement as computer has evolved, and we have things like touch screens and palettes, we now can just name things. And I can say, I want the pars in pink. Or I want them in uh, R68. And this is all done through LED technology. Um, the great thing about LEDs are they rarely, if ever, go out. They don't burn out. They're very energy efficient. The one problem with LEDs has to do with the color rendition. That because they produce a very narrow bandwidth of light, um, colors look odd underneath LED. So if I'm shooting red, it's a pure red, but it's a single red. So even though incandescent light is not very energy efficient, it's still beautiful, but the LEDs are getting a little bit better. LEDs are also great for hiding in places. These columns and arches you can see, I'm able to put a lighting fixture in here without having to worry about heat management and things like that. Right? Also, if you, for those of you who can see in the color picker, there's a range of color that's available for me. So I can step through every color of the rainbow. So we can do the same thing with the arches. Whereas when it was all four or five operators manually controlling this stuff, now it's like one button we can preset. The computer remembers all that data. And we move from needing 38 control channels per fixture to now if I wanted to pixel map to an LED wall, I needed 10 million control channels. So what we have here is a 30 mil pitch video wall. When you're talking about controlling 10,000 different LEDs in a square meter, once you extrapolate that out to something that's 30 feet by 20 feet tall, you're talking about if you want to control each one of those LEDs individual, you need a lot of DMX channels. There are some things that look fantastic even at their low res scale. We chose this specific device because we could pack it easy, we could move it from theater to theater, and as a soft fabric device, it was actually l fairly lightweight. It also is splittable. There's 12 panels up there. We'll walk up there and look at it. So we can split them out and we can use them in different configurations. If you look hard, you can see the seams. So we use the computer to control all of these different aspects of this light. Mm -hmm. 